G'day guys, bit of an interesting one today. I um, got a call from a guy over here in Perth saying that he's uh, brought a truck over from the Eastern States, um, uh, just a, like a camper truck sort of thing. And he said that he tried to get across the pits, but they had no gas compliance. Um, and I asked him about it. I said, what, is it a second hand one or someone's built? He goes, no, it's a brand new truck. And I said, so the gas has been installed? He said, yep, it's, it's got bottles, it's got an internal stove, everything's been done. It just needs a badge on it. I said, well, there must be a badge somewhere if it's a brand new truck. And um, he said it was from Brisbane, like they build some serious camper stuff over there. So there must be guys that know what they're doing. Anyway, um, went out to Daimler Truck, it's over in High Wycombe there to, to check it out. And I was just, just expecting, you know, to find one of the badges hidden in a cupboard somewhere, but there were no badges. And what it seemed like to me is that the, um, when, we, when we had a look at the, the gas install and stuff, it was like the, you know, the, the gas fitter had started the job, nearly finished it, went off to Smoko and then came back and the truck was on the truck, you know, truck was on the back of a tilt tray heading over to Perth. So there's just a few bits and pieces that we need to, um, yeah, make good on this. First of all, it was like pick a door to try and find the gas locker in the first, uh, in the first place. So after the third try, we, we found the gas locker. So it's very important that we, you know, there has to be a sticker on there for the fireys to make sure, you know, it's got to be reflective to make sure that they know that there's LPG if, if something goes bad to it. Um, the other thing, inside the locker, there was no vent or anything like that. There was no stickers. The hoses that go from the regulator down to the bottles are D-class and they have to be F-class. Now, D-class, I don't know what it stands for, but it's probably, you know, they were, they were all fine for years, but maybe someone has said, oh, D is maybe for dodgy. So we have to change those to F, which is probably fantastic. So we just change those over. But the reason we've got to change those over now is because there's been some new regulations back in April 21. So that's, that's the reason that we've done it. So yeah, just a few stickers. The gas isolation valve for the hot plate. Um, it needs to be in an accessible location and it's not really, it's behind one of these drawers that's similar to you know the, the toolbox drawers or the filing cabinet drawers. They're quite difficult to take out. Most people don't know how to, how to get them out. So in an emergency, you need to be able to reach it and turn it off. So what we're gonna do is just leave that one in place behind the cupboard and behind the drawer and everything and just put a new one in one of the lockers below so it's very easy to, to shut off and turn off. Uh, also, the bayonet out the back, they've just got these quick release fittings. So we're going to change that over and put a bayonet on there and then with a new hose to hook onto the um, yeah, the outdoor kitchen, okay? Now, the outdoor kitchen's like beautifully designed. It's, the, you know, it's a tiny little cupboard and they've jammed it all in there and it just fits perfectly, a little hot plate, you know, wok burner and stuff. So, we'll, yeah, we'll fix all that up. And um, also the vent on the door, it looks like there's a vent on the door, but when we've had a look inside, um, it looks like it's been foamed up. So we got to get that get that cleared out because when you're using the stove inside the fumes will you know accumulate and it won't you know the air won't be replaced and you'll end up you know getting sick from carbon monoxide poisoning the vent in the roof is permanently open so there's that's fine um that's all legit so anyway we'll just get it through and then hopefully this guy can get on and um you know get in this beautiful camper this outdoor finish too on it it's it's um you know when you're driving through your bushes and stuff usually your car's getting scratched by the bushes and the trees this thing will actually, you know, take the bark off the trees, you know, it's like sandpaper the whole lot. So, yeah, it looks brilliant. But anyway, we'll show you as we go along anyway. Okay, catch up. Okay, I got it all sorted, guys. Just come and look what I've done quickly. Uh, the LPG storage, I should say, is clearly marked you know, with a re reflective sticker. Okay, so inside there, we've got the new new gas bottle hoses. So you can see they've got a class F on it. Um, and they're also a bit easier to put in because, you know, you can do them with a the wheel now. So you can, you, you know, you can do them by hand instead of having to try to get a spanner in there as well we've got the sticker all important to say not to put battery drills in here also you've got the all important uh, gas badge up on the side saying that the it's all complies now there's a vent down the bottom you can see it coming out the bottom also because that stove you know that that stove we couldn't um you know it's really hard to difficult location to put the the gas valve so what we've done we've stuck a gas valve under here now okay so this here is now you can shut the shut the gas up to the stove so it's a much more accessible location to, to shut it down, I will move around to the back here. So we've we've taken out the quick release fittings, put in a gas um, bayonet here, and we've got our hose that goes all the way over to the to the wok burner here. Now it's very important if you've got to hook anything up to the um, bayonet at the moment, you just got to make sure that it's got a flame failure device. And the, the way you can tell, you should see a little rod. See this little rod down here? That's the thermocouple. So if your hot plate or or thing has got one of these on it, that means that it's got a flame failure device. So if it ever blows out the whole thing just shuts down, okay? So it's very easy to take off now. Just uh, pull, pull that off. 
and then unplug it at the back here. And then also put your all important dust cap in. And it'll stop the dust and everything. And this and this here, you know, what, what we're doing is just, just rolling it up a bit. It's quite loose. They've got a little drawer here. I don't know if they want to keep it in here, but that's probably a good good spot. Okay. Um, these holes, is, is, this whole vent is open now. They, they just had some foam in there. All important sticker on there to say that this must remain open, especially when they're, um, you know, using the hot plate. Just come inside. Got the little cooker warning here saying that, you know, you must ensure that the ventilation is open. Got the ventilation stick on the roof here as well. This is always open, this one. Anyway, even though it looks closed, it's got, you can see the air can still go out when this is cooker on this. So she's all ready to go over the pits now. It's all complied. And so hopefully uh, Angelo will be off there uh, going full driving wherever he wants now because it can just about go anywhere, this, this baby. So, um, all right, give us a call if you ever need anything, you know, any compliance done or anything like that. Um, give us a call if you're in Perth. Otherwise, uh, if you're over the other Eastern States or something, you have to find your own bloke. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you later. So, we've got a large workshop. Now, many years ago, I worked as a plumber at a company called Hasten Shipyards over in Holland. Now, they build these luxury aluminium super yachts. Now, it was there I was taught how to TIG weld because I had to make up brackets sometimes where there weren't, weren't any you know, support for these pipes that I was putting in. So, it's very easy for me to fabricate you know, brackets to hold bayonets or water connectors or something for your, for your caravan or camper to protect them from branches, bushes, or just to su support them. I don't know why, sometimes I just find it hard to concentrate. So if you, like me, live in the best city in Australia and you would like an extra gas bayonet put in your caravan, or you think there might be a gas leak, or you just need the gas um, certified on your camper or caravan, or even thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind having a little hot water system plumbed in, or even an extra water tank, give Beautiful Plumbing a call. We'll be happy to help. Hey, thanks for watching.